Does it spin you out now that you've had this success and you have people that you, you were just mentioning there that you grew up idolising and now you have the opportunity to meet them and uh, and, and yeah. yeah and sometimes they're asking to meet you. The Queen's the Queen's Jubilee was was the weirdest point for me just because um, you I met every single musical idol I'd ever had in the space of about five minutes. Really, and then um, after after meeting them, then. Uh, at the after party, uh, had the chance of in introducing to my dad. So me walking up to my dad with Paul McCartney and being like, "Dad, this is Paul. Paul, Dad, wow. have a chat." What? Or, yeah, like, or you know, Stevie Wonder, or who, who else was there? Elton John was there. Cliff, Cliff Richard, like God, what a stuff. night! Everyone. And then uh, I lost my mum in Buckingham Palace, and I was looking for her for about an hour, and I found her uh, two, bo <laughs> two two bottles of wine deep with Kylie Minogue on the sofa. <laughs> oh, are you joking? Yeah. And, and what's, is, it, what's it like to meet McCartney? I mean, McCartney, from a musical standpoint, he has got to be, you know, one of the absolute legends of yeah. the industry. Like, to meet him, were you, like, he's, quaking in your boots? He's or? just such a nice guy. Like, he, I was I, I was having a radio interview like, like this, but um, uh, the radio kind of thing was set up on the lawn of Buckingham Palace, so we're all having interviews, and everyone's... Like, all the radio people are on the same lawn, basically, and I'm being interviewed by uh, Radio 2, a guy called Chris, Chris Evans, and, mm, and Paul yeah. McCartney walked past. And I said to Chris Evans, Jesus Christ, that's, that's Paul McCartney. That's quite cool that he's just, you know, that close and walking past him. And Chris Evans was like, oh, you should go up and say hi to him. And I was like, I, I don't want to be that guy who goes up and yeah. says hi, takes a picture, and then walks away. I'd rather have a, a bit a bit of mutual respect there. So I, I was like, yeah, I'm... I'm um, I don't think I'm ready to go up and say hi to him. So we carried on the interview. Uh, and about five minutes into it, I get a tap on my shoulder, and I turn around, and it's Paul McCartney, and he gives wow. him this massive hug and says, "Oh, I really like your songs, lad." And I'm like, "Oh, what? Wow! <laughs> yeah, what cool. a validation that is. That is real yeah, cool. It was great. It was really. Um, it, it was. It was a brilliant day. Do you reckon that day is the single coolest day of your life? Like introducing my dad to Paul McCartney and seeing my dad's face because he was just freaked out. Yeah. Um, that was probably the coolest moment of my career so far. Just that kind of having my dad to be that surprised it was good because he your dad would have been through the 60s when the Beatles first yeah, broke well, my out dad's, my, my, like my, my dad took me to see McCartney when I was um, 11 as, as as well and he's been a massive Beatles fan from day one like he has every single record and plays them over and over again and he's always saying that McCartney's the you know the really talented songwriter and blah 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 and if I could meet anyone I'd love to meet Paul McCartney and what a gift yeah. to be able to give to your old man it's pretty cool that's, you should have ripped out a texture and said Paul sign this I'll get another tattoo <laughs> yeah, that's it yeah. Paul yeah. Well, well, be unreal um, Emma Stone um, the the actress uh, yeah. has a blackbird that's drawn by Paul McCartney tattooed on her, on, on her uh, oh, wrist cool. which is yeah, that's, quite cool that's unreal so when you went to that Damien Rice concert at the age of eleven up until then had you shown any great musical ability or interest or was I could play Layla on, on the guitar. Oh okay. So you had something right. Already. That, yeah. That was about it. Though. But that was when yeah. it consumed you. Music consumed you and that you was just when thought, this is what I want to do with my life. That was when I stopped trying to be slash from Guns N' Roses and uh, picked up an acoustic guitar and realised that I could actually just moan about girls and <laughs> <laughs> getting pissed. Yeah. It, it's pretty deep stuff though. And a friend of mine I said, What are we, you know ask me what we're gonna ask you and she said uh, she reckons you're one of the best songwriters ever, but you need to cheer the fuck up. <laughs> I, I mean, and that she softened that. Then I must then say that to you know what, no, what you inspires know what? and causes you to be so deep at your age. But you know what? Like the the, the reason why I'm such a cheery person is I'm such a moody when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to music. <laughs> you know, or, or, yeah, right. Okay. So because no, no, like yeah. like I get all my all my dark. Yeah, stuff out in in songs, and I sing about them every night. But in person, I I am actually a, a yeah, I'm clearly. You know, I'm not, I I don't I don't like wallow in my own self pity. But, no, so um, that's your release. Yeah, it's therapeutic. Pretty huh. much. Pretty that's much. Cool. I and, it owns, and, and it earns me a living, which which keeps me happy as well. No,